I couldn't tell if you were being safe or you were being Breaking Bad. You're cooking something up. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tommy from Galvin Auto Sports. And what you guys might not know about us is that we do corporate builds as well. So just like how you can bring your cars in and have us galvanize them, we have a lot of companies and corporations who come to us and say we want to build a project or we want to do a special vehicle for an event or an unveiling that they have. I have four Toyota Sienna minivans behind us that we worked on. I'm going to bring in Eric Persfield and Jordan Mann who worked on the vehicles and who uh, worked with the clients to explain a little bit about the cars to you guys. These cars, we've done uh, custom fabrication. We've had to uh, rearrange completely their interiors to do what the customer wants. And it just goes to show you what we can do. When we, when we truly say, if you could dream it, we could build it, whatever it might be, whether it's through a CNC machine, whether it's on our uh, water jet, whether it's on our lathe, we can build or come up and custom fabricate anything that you guys would want. Check them out, I hope you guys like them. And race, push into the cart. <laughs> anything off the trolley, dears? No, thanks. I'm all set. So this is the Crystal Dreams van. Uh, you can see from the outside wrap, it's got uh, a desert uh, landscape for the wrap design. On the interior here, we outfitted it with uh, some nice gold sheer curtains that make up the walls and the ceiling. We built this really cool uh, limo style bench so people can be comfortable inside. There's some sea salt lights, nice uh, rug floor. And the idea with this one is uh, at a music festival or event, people could come inside and then in the back, a crystal reader would sit in the back and tell you your horoscope and, and uh, fortune based on, on crystal readings. And then you walk away with a neat little crystal. Uh, here we've got the glamping van. Glamping is uh, kind of a short term for fancy camping. You can see inside this one, we've, we've built out a nice bed. Uh, there's a sink, some storage. It's built with uh, kind of reclaimed and repurposed materials. And uh, it, it just brings in kind of a homey vibe. And it also features a really nice awning here so you can sit outside and enjoy the sunset and be nice and comfortable. Uh, the van on the end here is uh, it's called Storefront Photo Shoot. Uh, there's a topper that sits on top and it looks like a Marfa, Texas storefront. Little pop-up uh, random stores out in Marfa, Texas. Really cool, this is a photo opportunity. Get your picture taken in front of the van. So just for the record, we didn't attach these, uh, these vinyl stickers because if we did, we'd make sure they were straight. Uh, they did it on site and it was done kind of last minute. So. That is not us. So what Jordan is doing is Jordan is hooking up what we call show power. When we build these vehicles, these vehicles, we can't have them run at the event or inside a convention center. So they need to be hooked up to regular, you know, 120 volt power. All right. Yeah, so basically at the shows, you can only have a quarter tank of gas, the keys have to be off site, the battery has to be disconnected. So we make everything plug in and run separately from uh, the car's system. First off, we got this uh, on both sides. It's an etched plexi window. Um, just a brand so, so this is not a logo. sticker this is not vinyl this is actually etched plexi behind the glass that's shining through so all the vans are equipped with uh, AC units so separate from the car one we uh, put them in the quarter panel so they all have AC that's piped in through the factory movements a little roller you would buy for your house uh, 12,000 BTU and we took it apart and flushed it in each quarter panel how'd you fit that big thing in the in the quarter panel influencing um, <laughs> weight reduction and then adding weight. Did you have to fabricate anything to make it work? Yeah, so we had to go into the wheel well a little bit and then we, uh, once we got the unit fitting in there, we welded and, and sectioned it back kind of like it was factory. Now this one, so it's super dark in here. Um, every window is blacked out. And we had a guy print a Galaxy on the headliner and then we put fiber optics in it kind of like a uh, Rolls Royce. So we can jump colors, you know, our full RGB. So there's a light cannon that's flushed in the, uh, the other quarter panel. But this one's pretty much just a flat base in here. They got some pillows. And then a camera guy sits right here on this pedestal. And this curtain wraps around to block out all the light. So there's a curtain rod there. And the camera guy sits here. The camera sits here and they wave lights in front of it. And it creates these uh, cool like connecting light pictures. So really cool idea. So we got a customer who brought in his Ford GT and he wanted to protect the front end. It's a low mileage 2006 GT. We're putting clear bra on the front bumper, the front hood, the fenders, and the mirror caps. 
check out the progress. It's going to be pretty cool. finished up clear brawing the front end of the Sport GT. Again, clear bra is a great way to protect your investment. So if you're going to own the car, even if you're leasing it, if you want to make sure that there's not going to be any rock chips or any damage from any road debris, again, light road debris, if you, if you hit a deer, that's not going to protect you. You're going to be uh, facing a lot of damage. But for small stuff like rocks, sap, uh, stuff like that that's going to come off the road, it's going to protect your investment. So when you're looking for clear bra, you have to kind of look carefully because you'll see it right at the edge of the paint you'll be able to feel it otherwise you're not supposed to notice that anything is on uh, the vehicle so you can kind of see right there you can see it on and you have two options when you get this service done you can either have it end right at the edge like this one or you can have it tucked in some customers want us to wrap it all the way in and tuck it in some customers don't uh, on specific vehicles if there's the body uh, gaps are very very tight sometimes we're not able to tuck it in because there's no tolerance for it. In some vehicles, you're able to do it. In this case, the headlights have been protected as well. We offer either front clip wraps, which is what we did here, uh, a partial front clip, and then whole, whole entire vehicles. So you let us know, we can kind of a la carte it to what you want. We could do as little or as much of the vehicle as you want, and we could protect your investment for you. So we had a lot of you asking us questions about this Cobra behind me. It's uh, one of our guys, Art, brought it in. It's one of his customers who recently purchased it. It wasn't running right. It was stumbling. It was stuttering. It wasn't performing the way it should have. So he brought it in. We diagnosed it. We figured out what was wrong with it. We ordered all the parts. The parts had to be uh, custom made. And once they were made, we put them on the car. And now it's ready to go. The customer is about to come pick it up. We have it all detailed and cleaned up. Check it out. If you guys have any questions about it, let us know. So Parker just stopped by to uh, get the uh, tires changed out on his uh, E63 uh, and uh, let's just swap out for him see what's going on. So what I have Hector doing behind me is he's dismounting the old tires, he's going to mount the new tires on there and get the car ready to go. There we go, all done. Update on the G-Wagon project. We uh, finished up the winch up front and we're doing some other small little touches for the customer. We're doing a bunch of lights as well. Let's check out the progress. Point of no return. So only one way all the wires are going to get in to power up all these lights. Got to drill through the roof. And you always want to make sure you measure twice and cut once. Because once you cut in the hole, uh, hole in the roof, there's no going back from that. So all these lights we're doing on the rack, all these lights are going to be set up. And then all the wiring needs to go inside the cabin. So that's how we're going to get it inside the cabin. We're going to have two on the sides, four in the front, two in the rear. It's all going to be controlled by this guy right here, Switch Pro. Nice. Which will control all the lights. And that's going to be able to take like, well, that's just a switch, so it doesn't matter as far as capacity or draw, right? Yeah, you can just program it to do multiple functions. Either you can have it flash or strobe, but it's going to control all the lights up on top. He's going to have lights underneath the seats. He's going to have rock lights underneath each wheel well. Oh, nice. And they'll all be controlled off this guy. So we did the roof rack up top, got the KC lights, Baja Design, Squadron Pros. There's a fuel tank variant, but you have extra fuel if you need to, extra fluids and water. And around back we have two more Baja Design Squadron Pros. On this side it's pretty cool, we have a, a mount for a high lift jack. We still have the lights underneath. And then another cool option is, so this window, it opens up. So we popped out the factory glass and we uh, replaced it with this window. It's lockable, but once you open it up, you can actually reach into the passenger area and uh, use it for storage. 
So you could, on the fly, when you're on the trail, you'll pop open this glass and be able to reach in anything that's behind in the uh, compartment area, or storage compartment. So what we did up here is we installed the cradle and the worn winch. The customer did not want to go with an aftermarket front bumper, wanted to keep it as OEM as possible. So we went ahead and uh, put the cradle in there, put the winch, synthetic line. There you guys have it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like this? Would you guys do it to your truck? I think this is awesome. It's like uh, ready for anything you want to throw at it. You can take it out camping, you can take it out on a safari, or you can go overlanding with it. It's a very nice to set up. All right, you're good to go. Thank you so much. Thank this you. Amazing. Pleasure. Glad you enjoyed it. Honored to be here working with you guys. Thank you so much Thank for the camera. Thank you for bringing the car down. I'll be back soon. All Thank right, you. Down. Take care. We'll see you. Have a good day. So we got a call from one of our customers saying that he finalized the deal on his Raptor. It's down here in our uh, inventory lot. He said, go pick it up and I want you to uh, modify it. So let's go find the truck. We're going to take it up so the guys can start working on it. It's a white four-door Raptor. You would think it'd be easy to spot, but we have quite a few in stock. There's one. There's one. There's one. I see a white one down there. All right, let's check. Let's see if this is it. Yep, that has the right stock number. So here it is, we found the truck that our customer bought. We're gonna grab it out of the inventory lot, take it up to gas. He's not even gonna take delivery of it till we fix it up. So uh, we're gonna get it done and then get it out to him so he can enjoy it as soon as possible. It's a Raptor that's just in the shop. We're running some Method wheels, uh, Toyo Open Country RT tires. That's the same thing that I'm running on my truck. And I think they're one of the best tires. Between the Toyo uh, Open Country RTs and the um, BF Girders KO2s, those are my two favorite tires running off-road or on-road. Hector has the original brakes off. So Hector, you're just taking apart the shock right now? Oh yeah. So he's dismantling it. This bottom pad piece has to get removed completely, so he's gonna take that off. And then the SVC piece is gonna go where that is. Well, and first he has to uh, relieve the charge from the shock, so he's gonna remove that piece of hardware right there. With an Allen wrench, once that's out, all the uh, fluid and the charge is going to come out of the shock and then it will allow him to work on it. Because right now, you can't even if you try to pull it down, it's going to be very hard to compress the shock by hand. There you go, now you see he's able to compress it all the way down. So what Hector's doing back there is he just finished installing the SVC leveling kit on the Raptor. So that's allowing us to level out the front end so the back end doesn't sit up higher. Traditionally, trucks always sit up higher in the back. So we're leveling that out. After that, we're putting a set of Alcon brakes on. So these Alcon brakes from 68, I think, or 65 to zero, stops the truck 30 feet faster than what the regular stock does. And it also helps with brake fade. So if you're doing a lot of off-roading or if you're doing a lot of towing, not that you would necessarily tow with a Raptor, but it's gonna help you in the long run to stop sooner and not experience a lot of brake fade. We're gonna check it out. So this is it, you have a six pot brake. The way when I say pot is six pistons. So the way you could count them is you can kind of see the spheres right here. So we have one, two, three on one side, and then you have four, five, six on the other. So this is a six piston brake setup. You have the calipers right in here, the pins holding it in, and then you have uh, there's brackets also that are probably in, there you go. So these brackets, these brackets are gonna mount up to the spindle, which is right here, you see we've already mounted this bracket to this spindle. And then once it's mounted there, the actual brakes will go ahead and, and mount up to that spindle with these holes right here. Hardware will go through and hold the calipers onto the spindle. And then these are the brake rotors. So they have these kind of scallops in them to again help with dissipating heat and getting the material, the pad material, out uh, out of the way so you're able to have clean pad material contact the surface at all times. This is the factory spindle here. So the factory brakes would go there. So what would happen here is this piece is provided by Alcon. We'll pretty much get bolted in here and the brakes would get bolted up onto that. We've taken off the stock Raptor caliper and I'm just showing you guys the difference. So the stock caliper has a two piston setup and this caliper style is referred to as a floating uh, caliper style where this piece 
is mounted directly into the vehicle or the truck so this part is directly mounted but you can see with these little joints the rest of the caliper can float back and forth and when you press the brakes it will clamp and float back and forth uh, riding the rotor in the middle so braking power wise you can see that two pistons although they're, my, they're a little bit bigger than each piston on here but you have six pistons here as opposed to the two pistons there this is very typical to what you see on regular cars that you and I own. Uh, almost 80, I would say, percent of our cars on the road right now utilize this type of technology. So it's a very uh, uh, standard way to do it. And it's not necessarily a bad way, but when you want more performance and you want something that does the job better and stops faster and, you know, it's safer. Imagine if you stop 30 feet faster, that, that's almost, you know, a half a truck lane. So, or a couple car lengths, so that could be the difference between life and death. So there you go, Hector has it on. The bracket for the caliper had to go on first. Once the caliper bracket went on first, then the rotor went on. And then now the brake uh, caliper with the pads and everything else goes in afterwards. You're good to go.